All right, say something real quick. Something real quick. All right, cool. Okay, cool. We're recording now. So this is going to be about the differences between a financial coach and a financial advisor. Uh, I know you probably heard both of those terms around the block, around the street, around the hood. Right. So we wanted to make a video about what the difference is between them so that uh, you can you can better understand like what the differences are so you can pick and choose which one you want to work with. You know, if that's something that you're working on right now. That was a really long winded intro and a lot of necessary talking. <laughs> 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 Let me try it again. <laughs> All right, so this video is going to be about the difference between a financial coach and a financial advisor. And the reason that we're doing this is because I'm sure you probably heard the terms financial coach around and financial advisor around a lot. And you might be wondering what the differences are. So we wanted to make a short video of the top six, I think the six or five reasons. Yeah, five or six. The top five or six reasons of what the difference between a financial coach and a financial advisor is so that um, you can understand, you know, if you're looking to work with somebody in relation to your finances, who to pick. So we got, we got, well, this is Josh. You guys know Josh. What's up, everyone? Happy to be back with my boy, Arjun. And I'm Arjun. That's me. So, so we Hello. got... So we got, we're going to break it up in topics and just spend a little bit of time on each one. All right. So the first one is uh, why you would get each one. All right. So, so just a little background, right? Josh, you're both a coach and a financial advisor. Yes. So do coaching and financial advising. Cool. And I am a financial coach. I don't have a financial advisor licenses or anything like that. So the first one is why you would get each one. So why would you get a financial advisor and why would you get a financial coach? So as we were discussing, Arjun was a financial coach is going to talk about more about the why behind investing. It's going to peel the onion, peel off the layers and really dig deep uh, rather than most financial advisors being that financial advisors are typically older. Um, they're more of solution driven. So they're going to say open this kind of account choose this sort of investment, um, basically being you know, more direct with the, uh, the answers that they're given versus a financial coach is going to take a little bit more time to understand the reasoning behind the decisions you want to make. Would you say that's about, about right? Agree, disagree? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. So basically a, a financial advisor's, um, like, okay, if we take an example of, you know, analogy of a, uh, a personal trainer, right? If you go to the, you know, you want to start working out, you would hire a personal trainer and the trainer is going to tell you, well, they're first going to chat with you and ask you like, like a good one should, right? What is your goals? Why is it that you want to work out? And then help you craft a plan and a training program in order to help you get to that, that point, right? And it's personalized to you. Okay. So that would be somebody like a coach, right? They're going to help yeah. you with all the aspects like, that you need, like the diet, the, the, the daily regimen, if you need to, what workouts to do and in what order you should do them. Um, and then you go and do those things. Like you have to go and execute all of those things. Like you got to prepare your food. You got to like make sure you sleep enough time. You got to do the workouts. The, the, the trainer, the coach is not going to do that for you. So then, what, what a financial advisor would be like at some point you might say, okay, well now I got everything set. You know, I'm like, I'm autopilot with this stuff. Now I, I, I want to outsource the, my diet. Right. So I want somebody to just make the food for me or order it or whatever, or track it. I don't know, like whatever, like you want to outsource the diet. So then you would outsource that to somebody that person would be like the financial advisor. Or like a, a nutritionist. <laughs> Yeah. Like somebody's gone to school, they studied everything about food and perhaps maybe you're doing everything right financially or doing everything right in the gym, but based on your genetics, perhaps you need to dive a little bit deeper to adjust your game plan so that you can get where you want to go. Yep. Yeah. And that frees up a lot of time for you too. Like 
w once you get to a certain point, the amount of time you spend managing your money is going to like go up. Yeah, I mean, it, it, as uh, the great notorious B.I.G. once said, "Mo money, mo problems." <laughs> and so, the more money you have, the more problems you're going to run into. So, it's always good to have a personal trainer or a financial coach to get you where you want to go. Um, but there also comes a time where you know money's infinite, but time is not. So, it's good to start delegating tasks once you start moving yeah. up in your life and career. Right, and then you can also create a job too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we just need just needed to virtue signal that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, the second topic is compensation. How is each one compensated? And I think this is important because people want to know how the per people that you're working with get paid. Like, what are their incentives? Because that that uh, colors the relationship that you have with them. So, for a financial coach. And I've, I've not seen a financial coach that is not paid in this way, but a financial coach is compensated based on a like a flat fee. Yep. It's either hourly or it's like program based. And, and that's what the fee is. And, and that's that's it. They don't get paid for selling products or services to you. They get paid for the time they spend with you. Yeah, 100 percent correct. Rather than a. A financial advisor, depending on what kind of advisor they are, there's different kinds of advisors. You have advisors that are fee only. And I would say that is the most directly correlated to how a financial coach is compensated. But there are other advisors out there that do sell products and they get commissions on them. And it's not 100% transparent on if they're recommending this because it's the right thing for you or they're recommending it because they need money to eat. Um, and that's where the gray area comes into play just because not all financial coaches are the same. Not all financials are the s advisors are the same either. So it's, it's when, when you're looking at an advisor, like we can't really tell you how they get paid exactly because each one is, is paid differently. There's also the a AUM model, right? So they get a percentage of all the money that you, you'd manage. Yeah. Once you start trusting an advisor that managed your money on your behalf, they do get a fee for managing that relationship. And the better your account does, the better they do. The worse the account do, the worse they do. Um, there are times when the markets are going to go down. And whether you're Warren Buffett or Josh Krafchick, you can't really control that and your investments are going to lose value. But what you can control from an advising standpoint is how you are um, – strategizing your money so that if the markets do go down, you're able to at least put in um, an action plan just in case things decide to go down. Um, rather than the coach, it's really up to you. Like the coach isn't gonna, you could be in there, but most coaches aren't in there managing your money for you. They're just the guide to get you to the promised land. Yeah, a coach, like in that example, a coach would be somebody who um, helps you come back to rea reality and, and sensical state of thinking if you're freaking out over losing half of your investment in the market yep all right so that's that's on compensation now we want to talk about inputs to each one and what i mean by inputs is what you would come to like if you're going to meet with a coach or an advisor what you would come to the table like or what you can bring to the table to them so uh you know start with an advisor like if you if if i was like if you were going to take on a client what kind of stuff would they bring to you? Yeah, so there's been times where people come to me and maybe they need help with budgeting. In my opinion, can I help someone with budgeting? Absolutely. But nine times out of 10, if someone just really needs help with budgeting and that's all they need coaching on, it would be better to work with a financial coach than with an advisor just because um, budgeting is not my area of expertise rather than there are plenty of coaches out there who budgeting is their bread and butter. Um, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, I feel like, uh, in a, it, when you're working with a financial advisor, you give them the, you give them like, what is it that you want to accomplish? And depending on you know i guess depending on the relationship the reins to your uh uh like your your investments yeah. so that, let's say hey i want to buy a house right i would come to a, a financial advisor and you would show me how i would how that would be possible you go okay you want to buy a house worth 
like a million bucks. Here's what you got to do. You got to save this much each month in order to down payment. And then this is like, this is how it's going to work technically, right? This is how you can accomplish that goal. And then you can see whether that's realistic or not, whether you actually want to do that, you know, put in all the, make all the sacrifices to make that happen. Whereas a coach would be like, you would tell the coach, hey, I want to buy a house. And the coach would ask you, okay, why do you want to buy a house? And like really get to the root cause of that reason and help you understand whether that's rooted in like a fear and you're running away from something or you're moving towards something. Like you're making that decision out of logic, reason, and love instead. Yeah, and I would agree with that because most advisors, um, if they're not already well established, they're looking to build practices. And the best way to build practice is to bring money under management, sign up coach, coaching clients, you know, start getting fees rolling in. So they really don't want to spend a lot of time on those sort of things from my experience working with other advisors. So I definitely would say um, comparing coaches to, you know, most coaches and most advisors, I definitely feel like that that's a great example and definitely holds, holds weight. Okay. So next we have the age of each one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the average age of a financial advisor, I think is in the mid fifties. Cool. So it's really hard for someone that, I mean, it's like you trying to relate to, um, how old are you, Arjun? 28. 28. So, I mean, if, you're 56 and you're 28. That's like you trying to relate to a 14 year old. Like you can, but it's going to be a little bit of a, be a little bit of a challenge. They're half your age. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the average age of a financial coach is. I feel like that number changes like every day because more people enter that space. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, I mean, so that, that's a, kind of a interesting topic. It's like a little aside there. Anybody can be a financial coach. Right. There's no license requirements or anything like that, but not everybody can be a financial advisor or just call themselves a financial advisor. There's actually licensing um, and education that you have to go through in order to be a yeah. and financial you, advisor. And, yeah, I mean, and if you do shady things, they will take your licenses away rather than there's no really, there's no regulations between financial coaching. I mean, if someone wants to start recommending crazy things as a financial coach, there's nothing really stopping them rather than if I start doing things that are out of the norm, people can report me to certain agencies and they can come shut me down. Yeah. Well, you still have the rule of law. Like if a coach does something that's hurts you, then you can get restitution for it. There's always that, but that's the same yep. thing with a financial advisor too. The financial yeah. advisor just has more to lose. Like they could lose their license. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then it goes on your permanent record, which uh, if someone looks you up, that's not good for business when you have uh, those stains on your on your licenses. Yeah, those one stars, one star reviews. Yeah, those <laughs> one star reviews. Um, yeah, so I mean, the age of each is not really like there's no difference. I, I mean, it's not really a difference topic, but it's more like it goes into the relatability, right, of um, who you want to work with. Like whether you're gonna pick to work with a coach or a financial advisor. Um, you're going to want to like vet them properly and make sure that they like agree with the values and important things in your life. Right. Like you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to work with somebody who doesn't agree on like some, maybe some basic ideological principles that you have. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be the same religion or color or, you know, background as someone, but it's, it's good for someone to see the world from the same lens that you do. And that'll just strengthen the connection because this is money. It's a delicate topic and you want to make sure that someone is uh, going to be there for you just in, just in case uh, poop hits the fan. Yeah. <laughs> poop. <laughs> poop. I like saying poop. Poop is such a funny word. <laughs> when poop hits the fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I had that as I had a poop hitting the fan as my profile picture for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was happening. Okay. So that's it. Is there any like last words that you want to share on the difference between the two? Yeah. I mean, I feel like if you're looking to be educated and you want to take the time to learn about the markets and it's something you want to do on your own, a financial coach or an advisor that is coaching definitely makes sense because that's going to be more of a, um, short-term relationship. However, if you're finding life is getting hard, 
Um, your time is, you know, time is always ticking and sometimes we can only handle so much as people. I mean, every man and woman needs to know their limitations. Then it makes sense to start delegating tasks and having someone manage your assets for you for a fee. Um, that's the best way to do it. Obviously, um, the more money that you keep, the more money you make, but at times in order to grow, you got to be willing to, you know, carve off a piece of the pie to let someone else help you. Cool. So just remember, the financial coach is like a personal trainer and the financial advisor is the nutritionist. Perfect. Cool, Arjun. Glad we did this. I'm excited to see what video we do next. All right. Same, man. Bye. All right.